Nunuk 2025 hasn't been a great year for the Starship program. As we approach the end of this version's development cycle, it's becoming increasingly clear that the 25th launch, once a key goal for the year, almost certainly won't happen. However, this also sets the stage for a pivotal 2026. Several critical milestones, not just for Starship itself, but also for its HLS variant, will need to be achieved to keep the broader mission timeline on track. So today, we'll break down all the major goals Starship needs to accomplish in 2026 and answer one important question. Can SpaceX pull it off? But first, sad news, guys. Starship is calling it off again. This marks the second night in a row that the 10th test flight of the massive rocket has been delayed. It was originally set to launch Sunday at 6.30 p.m. local time in Starbase, Texas, but a hardware issue forced SpaceX to push things back. The launch was then rescheduled for Monday night, with the window opening at the same time as Sunday. Later, they moved it to 6.44 p.m. because of weather concerns. For a while, it seemed like things were moving in the right direction, but the weather just wouldn't let up. Thunder, rain, and lightning were all hanging around. In the end, better safe than sorry. This was one of the few Starship launches left in 2025, but don't worry, in 2026, SpaceX faces a lengthy to-do list of technical milestones for its Starship program. These include catching and reusing Starships, performing in-orbit ship-to-ship refueling, and ultimately achieving long-duration space flights to the moon, potentially supporting stays of weeks, months, or even years. For the first major milestone, catching and reusing Starships, SpaceX has already come close. We've seen the vehicle return and perform a soft landing in the ocean, as the company had previously outlined. However, Progress stalled somewhat with the Block 2, or Version 2, variant of Starship, which has faced reliability issues for some time. These problems have significantly slowed down the overall development program and delayed progress on the other key objectives. So, at the beginning of 2026, SpaceX will try to successfully catch a Starship, which is expected to be achieved with the Block 3 version. This new version is designed to resolve many of the persistent issues seen in Block 2. One of the most significant upgrades in Block 3 is the transition from the rapid Raptor 2 to Raptor 3 engines, increasing payload capacity by an estimated 40 tons, bringing total reusable payload capability to over 100 tons. Inside the Starship Block 3 booster, there's a completely redesigned fuel transfer system, about the size of a Falcon 9's entire first stage. This new cryogenic transfer tube moves propellant from the Super Heavy booster's main tank down to all 33 Raptor engines, and it's designed to enable simultaneous ignition of all 33 engines a major improvement over past designs. Additional changes in Block 3 include a move to a three-grid fin configuration, with each grid fin now 50% larger and constructed from higher strength materials. These new grid fins also include integrated catch points, enabling the booster version 3 to be caught directly at these structural attachment sites. However, to truly achieve the level of rapid, full reusability that SpaceX envisions, a key challenge lies in developing a heat shield that can also be rapidly reused. Currently, Starship uses ceramic heat shield tiles. While ceramics are excellent at withstanding extreme heat, they're also fragile. These materials are vulnerable to cracking and thermal stress because they expand when heated and contract when cooled. Over multiple flights, this constant cycling can cause tiles to degrade or break. To handle this, the tiles must be mounted in a way that allows the structure underneath to move. For instance, Starship's internal tanks store cryogenic fuel at extremely low temperatures, causing them to shrink. During re-entry, however, the vehicle heats up dramatically, causing the entire structure to expand. This dynamic shift means the gaps between rigid tiles are constantly changing, sometimes by as much as 10 to 20% in areas near the cryogenic tanks. To solve this, SpaceX is developing a new type of tile made from a fine weave of glass and aluminum oxide fibers. Aluminum oxide is essentially the same material found in sapphire, so this approach combines glass and sapphire-like fibers arranged in a very precise heat-resistant structure. In addition to this complex fiber weave, the tiles require special coatings and must be manufactured in precise geometries to ensure they survive the extreme heat of re-entry and can be reused flight after flight. 
SpaceX is continuously iterating on this system, experimenting with different materials, coatings, and structures to find the optimal balance of durability, heat resistance, and reusability. They're also testing metallic tile options, which could offer promising advantages, but those designs are still in early stages and lack sufficient flight data to confirm their performance. While rapid, full reusability is a critical long-term goal for Starship, SpaceX currently has another pressing priority, fulfilling its commitments to one of its most important partners, NASA. SpaceX is developing the Human Landing System, HLS variant of Starship, for the Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 missions. This lunar lander version is based on the core Starship design, but with significant modifications to meet NASA's requirements. The schedule is tight. NASA has set a nominal landing date for Artemis 3 in 2027. As of now, NASA's most recent assessment of major projects report shows that the Starship HLS has only just passed key decision point C. This milestone moves the project from the formulation phase into the implementation phase, meaning SpaceX can now begin final design work and start building actual hardware. One of the most critical upcoming milestones is demonstrating in-orbit refueling. SpaceX needs to conduct a test in low Earth orbit to prove it can transfer large quantities of cryogenic propellant, liquid oxygen and methane, between starships. Currently, no orbital propellant depots exist, and cryogenic fluid transfer in microgravity has never been done. However, multiple concepts have been proposed to make this possible. One promising approach involves using both starships to generate a small but steady thrust. This creates artificial acceleration that mimics gravity just enough to settle the propellants at the bottom of their tanks. Once the fluids are settled, transferring them becomes much more feasible. The actual transfer relies on pressure differentials. By slightly reducing the pressure in the receiving tank and increasing it in the source tank, the fuel can be pushed through the transfer lines. This technique could allow for relatively fast transfers, which is ideal. The quicker the transfer, the less time both vehicles need to maintain thrust, minimizing the amount of propellant vented to keep the tank settled. They also need to build up their Starship flight rate to be able to fill the depot with enough fuel for the lunar landing mission. A single lunar mission could require approximately 10 launches just to fill the fuel depot in orbit. Before Artemis 3 can launch, SpaceX must prove that its Starship Human Landing System, or HLS, can both land on the moon and lift off again. Originally, the NASA contract only required a successful uncrewed landing. However, that has since changed. The updated requirement now mandates a full demonstration, including a launch from the lunar surface. This adjustment likely reflects the urgency of the timeline and the need to reduce risk ahead of the crewed mission. When asked whether this new liftoff requirement increased the contract's value, NASA clarified that the modification is part of its preparation for Artemis 3, which aims to return astronauts to the lunar surface for exploration and scientific discovery. According to NASA, prior to the crewed Artemis 3 mission, SpaceX must complete an uncrewed demonstration in which Starship HLS lands on the moon and operates on the surface for at least two hours, transmitting data back to Earth. In December 2023, NASA officially amended the Human Landing System Appendix H contract to include the additional requirement that Starship must also lift off from the moon and demonstrate the ability to relight its Raptor engines. Importantly, this change does not come with additional funding. Also, Starship HLS doesn't need to reach lunar orbit on this test. Just proving it can take off from the surface is sufficient for this milestone. For reference, during the actual Artemis 3 mission, once surface operations are complete, Starship HLS will lift off from the moon and return to lunar orbit to rendezvous with the Orion spacecraft. The crew will then transfer back to Orion for their journey home to Earth. Fortunately, there's good news. NASA's Artemis II crewed test flight is now less than a year away, and the mission appears to be on track. Originally scheduled for 2024, two years after Artemis I, the launch slipped to 2025 and then to 2026, due in part to investigations into unexpected char loss on Orion's heat shield. In December 2024, NASA decided to proceed with the existing heat shield design for Artemis II while planning modifications for Artemis III and future missions. For now, Artemis II's biggest hurdles seem to be behind it. On August 18th, the final piece of Artemis II flight hardware for the Space Launch System rocket left NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. It is scheduled to arrive at Kennedy Space Center in Florida this week, 
for integration with the rest of the rocket. Built from lightweight aluminum, the ring-shaped Orion Stage Adapter connects the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage ICPS, to the Orion spacecraft. Inside the ring, a composite diaphragm acts as a barrier, preventing gases like hydrogen from entering Orion. Additionally, the adapter includes an auxiliary rendezvous target, which the crew will use during a planned proximity operations demonstration to test Orion's handling in space. Even the Orion spacecraft itself, once the pacing item for Artemis II, has reached a stable and confident position in the schedule. The Artemis II mission, a crewed lunar flyby, will be the 21st century counterpart to Apollo 8, the mission that gave us the iconic Earthrise photo. Four astronauts will embark on a nearly 10-day journey around the moon and back. The mission will not only pave the way for landing astronauts at the moon's south polar region, but also serve as a critical stepping stone toward future crewed missions to Mars. As the first humans to fly NASA's Orion spacecraft in space, the Artemis II crew will also conduct scientific investigations to support future deep space missions. One of these will be a lunar science investigation conducted while Orion flies approximately 6,400 to 9,700 kilometers from the moon's surface. From this vantage point, the moon will appear about the size of a basketball held at arm's length, a rare and valuable opportunity for remote scientific observations. As Orion passes behind the moon, the far side that always faces away from Earth, the crew will analyze and photograph geological features such as impact craters and ancient lava flows. Drawing on extensive geology training, the astronauts will describe the shapes, textures, and colors of surface features, data that will be crucial when Artemis III astronauts explore the moon's surface in person. They may also observe brief flashes of light from meteoroids striking the surface or detect lunar horizon glow, dust illuminated and suspended above the moon's edge, a still mysterious phenomenon that scientists hope to better understand. The observations made by the Artemis II crew will help lay the foundation for future lunar science operations on Artemis III and beyond, bringing humanity one step closer to a sustained presence on the moon. As we approach the end of 2026, Elon Musk still maintains that a first mission to Mars could happen this year, though he now admits it has only a slight chance of success. That marks a notable shift from his earlier, more optimistic projection of a 50-50 chance for a 2025 launch. The ultimate goal remains unchanged, building a self-sustaining city on Mars, capable of surviving independently from Earth. Musk has said such a settlement could eventually host over a million people and would require transporting millions of tons of cargo across interplanetary space. Starship, possibly in a next-generation form, would serve as the workhorse for this vision, standing 142 meters tall when fully stacked. Musk imagines thousands of Starship upper stages arriving and departing during each Earth-Mars launch window forming the backbone of a multiplanetary civilization. That said, even Musk acknowledges this is highly ambitious. He now sees 2028 as a more realistic target for an uncrewed Starship Mars flight with a potential crewed mission around 2030, about four years later than originally hoped. So, yes, Mars may not be happening just yet, but even without a Red Planet Rendezvous, 2026 is shaping up to be a massive year for SpaceX. Between Starship testing, NASA obligations, and infrastructure milestones, the challenges ahead are significant. But if there's one thing SpaceX is known for, it's turning the impossible into reality. They thrive on challenge and often end up surprising the world in the process.